My brother, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How you feel, Al? I'm blessed. I'm rocking the gym for yeah, you. I, I see. I see. I see. <laughs> It's packaged, but I'll go with it. I'll go with it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one size fits all. You know, universal vibe. Yes, sir. You know yes, what sir. I mean? Good to be here. Absolutely. We want to welcome everybody in. Let's jump into this. As a child growing up, tell me about your musical influence growing up in Queens. Ah, oh, man. Um, I listen to a little bit of everything, I Like, I, you know, like I came from the generation like MTV was all you had, and you know, then from there, once things started rolling a little bit more, we got video music box and stuff. But yeah. I was influenced by everything, everything from the police to to Def Leppard to Rock Him and Eric B to Cool G Rap to I remember pop stuff like Pat Benatar and and and. Tina Turner and all the stuff that was out in the eighties, of course, Michael Jackson. So all those things I think found their way into the music I make, you know. No doubt, no doubt. So what what spawned you into wanting to be a lyricist? What what got you in, in like, all right, I want to start this rap thing mm -hmm. out? It was I mean, um, it was always something it's funny because I think my first, first true, true blue experience rapping in front of people was like in seventh grade. And mm -hmm. my English teacher, Mr. Pigman, he said, um, you know, we could, because I think me and my man Julian was doing Kid and Play in the talent show. Okay. <laughs> Shout out to Kid and Play. But then um, the only way we were able to do it was uh, my English teacher, teacher, Mr. Pigman, said, we had to do a rap about Julius Caesar. He was inspired by an episode from the Cosby show. Okay. So I wrote a little rap about Julius Caesar and we did it. And that was like the first time I had ever even sat down and tried to make words rhyme and, and wrote anything out. And then as I got older, um, I grew up with large professor shout out to large pro. So, yeah, that's my yeah. man, man. Sort of. Yeah, that's, that's big bro. So you know, going okay, going to his crib, like he had the turntables and the mic hook up, and everybody would just come in, and if you spit, you know, you would just shoot some bars off. And at that time, I was DJing, so the more I was around his crib and around that element, the more I kind of like in my quiet time would play around with rhyming and. And the next thing I knew, people around me was like, yo, you should really, like, you know, do it more. So I started doing that one, and eventually I left DJing alone and concentrated on writing rhymes and the rest is history, bro. Wow, that, that's what's happening, man. It's large professor, I, I think he's one of, the, uh, one of, one of the most underrated hip-hop artists out here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's one of the, the architects. Like, you wouldn't even have a lot of the producers you have running around now if he didn't lay down the template. So, again, yeah. shout out to Big Bro. You know, he, he definitely is one of the wizards in, in the culture. That, that's what's mm -hmm. happening. So, so in, in, in your opinion, what makes Queen so special? Because it's like... Queens just seem a little different. And, and, and I'm telling you this as, as an outsider uh -huh. looking in. Uh -huh. And it's like, you know, and it ain't a knock against any of the other boroughs, mm -hmm. but Queens was just a little different. What what do you think that is? Where, where do you think that, that comes from? I don't know, bro. You know how, like, Queens just had its own type of swag. Like, Queens just had its own type of cool to it. You understand what I'm saying? And it's deep because if you do the history of the Queens, like a lot of jazz musicians and a lot of people from the early Renaissance of music, like they, they, you know, they lived in Queens like Louis Armstrong and, and people of that caliber. And I think um, Queens is just such a mashup of every culture in the world. Like I, I believe it's the most diverse province in all of the United States. So you, okay. so you see every nationality under the sun in Queens. You could walk five blocks in Queens and you're going to see everything under the sun. And I think 
you know, that combined with it being a jazz home, like, it just gives it its own kind of, like, magic. You understand what I'm saying? And then I think from the MC standpoint, like, you know, you have so many MCs that came from Queens that they left the bar very high, you know, for 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 the for the next in line. So just being from Queens, you always had to have, you know, something amazing lyrically because that's the precedent that was set by the predecessors who followed. So I'm on it, bro. I wouldn't want to be from nowhere else in this world, bro. So so tell me this. What's up? And, and I'm about to go here, all right? Hold when you when you heard the bridge is over. Uh -huh. What what was you feeling? What was you thinking at the at you know when you heard oh, that when I was you first heard it? Like everybody else from Queens when I first heard it. <laughs> 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 you know, shout out to KRS one, the blast master. That's that's what he did. He blast master. You know, so yeah. I mean, even being a, a young kid, and at that time I couldn't have been no more than I would say ten maybe 11 years old at that if, if that um yeah. but i was i felt in a type of way because you know that's somebody poking shots and you know throwing shots at your borough you know but i think that ultimately it with queens is kind of like you know when you you come at it sideways you're not really you know you're not putting the fire out you're putting gasoline on it you know so okay. Yeah. It served for 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 two purposes. Like it kind of stung, but then it kind of made us all be like, "Wait a minute, hold on!" Like, don't <laughs> quiet queens. Like, nah, that you know, we'll 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 work that out, and, and we did. Well, yeah, yeah, because <laughs> bounce back was crazy. I'm like, all oh, these cats are just out here killing it right yeah. now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And, and it's like Queens always been a real solid movement. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying. And, and like you said, and like lyrically, it seemed like it was so much emphasis on lyrics. And and I'm like, man, who who influenced you lyrically the most? Like like you heard rap and it was like, okay, yeah, uh, here we go. Man, there's so many people. Um, definitely Rakim. Shout out to Rock. You know, Big Bro Rakim. Like God MC. Yeah, the God. You know, God <laughs> was the first one I heard, and just the way he would flow and, and the words he would choose and the way that he would like his cadence was just crazy. So yeah, definitely LL, you know, shout out to L L L would say something that was very highbrow, but incredibly sarcastic, you know, it, yeah. where somebody else might have to sit there and be like, wait, is he talking about me? Yeah, he's talking about you. <laughs> so LL definitely, I think G-Rap, I credit for realism and kind of like viewing yourself like you're a journalist in a sense, just just giving a description of your environment. Um, And Slick Rick, Slick Rick definitely in terms of intellect, in terms of 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 uh, wit in terms of yeah. um, just making something that, that you know, it's going to resonate with you. So I think those were probably the first batch of people that I heard that, you know, heavily influenced lyrically what I tried to, what I set out to do. Now, when you started, when you started spitting, mm -hmm. what would you say was like uh, some of your, your, your favorite, uh, Hip hop beats that that you always wanted to rhyme to, or you kind of practice to. Like I'm about to put this on and just kill oh, it. Oh man, um, I absolutely, positively used to love um, rhyming over "I Get Lifted" by George McRae. Yeah, um, yes. I love rhyming over "UFO" the breakbeat UFO. Um, you from Queens, so if you couldn't rhyme the rising of the top, you didn't even belong <laughs> nowhere near Mike. You know, like that's mandatory if you from Queens. You gotta have something to spit over rising, um, catch a beat, uh action by Orange Crush. That was another one, another break beat. But I would rhyme to pretty much anything. Like if it had a rhythm to it and and, and I just felt those vibes, I would just 
black out and just go for it, you know, as long as it moves. Now, how, how did you get your first deal? How, how, how did that whole episode go down? Um, I had a mutual friend that I went to high school with. Uh, I went to Bayside High School out in Queens, and, and a mutual friend to Herb Gotti was my man Chucky Madness, and he was a DJ in Queens. He was, like, a pretty big DJ in Queens at the time. But he was a senior in high school, and he kind of would watch over me. Um, and he heard me spit in the lunchroom one day. And then when he did, he introduced me to, like, DJ Sage and, and Rockwilder and all of them because that was, like, part of the team that he ran with. And he told yeah. me to start coming to his crib on the weekends. And I didn't really know what we was up to. Like, I would go, he would, he would cut beats up and... I guess he was like secretly recording me and I didn't really know it. And then, um, right. so long story short, he had, and he entered me into a talent show in Southside. And I guess he told Irv, you know, about me. And I guess he had told him to come down and Irv came to the show and we met, we was cool, you know, and I just performed and Irv started telling me about a studio and I just grabbed him around his neck and just started spitting in his ear. And he was just <laughs> smiling, laughing. He's like, yo, you got to come through. So we caught up maybe, I'll say, a week or two after that. And we went to the studio. And, like, the first song we ever ended up doing was just real. And then from there, um, I guess Gotti was taking it to labels, but it wasn't moving fast enough for, for his liking. So... We kind of, he just said, yo, we're going to press it up. And I was like, all right, but how? And he's like, let me worry about that. And then you know, we <laughs> pressed it up, and we had the, the vinyl, and we just went to every DJ, every club, anything, any 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 big dogs out in the street that, you know, they, they was the ones that, you know, the the rest of the, 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 the crew would follow. We would give them the song free and, Next thing you know, I was up at TBT, and I met with Steve Gottlieb, who was the president, and the meeting went well, and that became my home, and that was it. We was all right. That's dope. Yeah. Irv, a silly dude. I, I met Irv back in the day when um he, he used to come to Ohio because he used to rock with uh Mark Gordon from The Verge. Right. And I... And that was when he used to, you know, he's yeah. that's when he was just doing the beats and whatnot, yeah. man. That's a stupid dude. Yeah. Irv was out, <laughs> like, Irv was on the road way ahead of me. So, you know, I know he was doing things with Jazzo and, and Hove, and I know he actually was on the road with Large Pro, um, and he had his own rap group uh, before, you know, I came along. So he was definitely seasoned to seeing the game before me and being on the road a lot. But shout out to Gotti, man. It would have never been what it was without him, you know. No doubt, no doubt. Now, you you win the business, mm -hmm. and 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 you you're pretty much learning as you go. Yeah, definitely. What what was really opening up your eyes? Like, okay, this shit is really business. You know, I'm I'm just, I just want to rap, but mm -hmm. this this is some serious business. What what really opened up your eyes? I think Al, it was um. I always tell people you can't unlearn what you learn. And I think the 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 um the ironic gift that I had was naivete uh, and like not knowing a lot of the the infrastructure and the mechanics behind music. Like I didn't know, you know, they had people to talk to to program directors. I didn't even know what program directors were, bro. So you know, it opened my eyes when I started seeing what the the expectation was for me. Still, mm. I was like in my first week or my second week, and right. there was all this chatter around the labor, the the label about um, oh, your first week you should do this, and your second week you should do that. And uh, before that, I'd never even known that there was this much um that goes into making, you know, records hit the airwaves. But I think right. once I started to learn about things like sound skin and BDS and rotation and placement and playlist and, 
you know, then it kind of dawned on me where I was like, okay, there's a lot of people that are put in place. And if you put all these people in place, it must cost a lot to do that. Yeah. But once I started, you know, looking at how many people were involved in making your favorite song become your favorite song, it started to dawn on me that it was a business. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, as they say, a machine. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, that and studio time. I think studio time, even before that, was what really made me see. Because, you know, you go in a studio and you just think you could rock all night. And, you know, you could smoke your, your trees and drink your Hennessy yeah. and all that. And, then, uh, and all that cost, you know, so... Somebody got to pay, pay for it. There's no such thing as a free lunch. You feel me? So once, <laughs> once that, you know, started setting in, then I was like, oh, okay, this is a business. I get it, you know? Yeah. Now, you you know, started touring. What, what was, like, uh, a couple of your most favorite cities that, that you uh, toured, you know what I'm saying, once you hit the road? Oh, man. I don't think there's anywhere we went that I didn't dig. Um I definitely loved Los Angeles from the minute I first got there. Like the minute right. I ever first stepped in Los Angeles, I fell in love with it. Um, Florida, Miami, I love Miami. Um, and I loved going like to Daytona. Yeah. Um, Virginia was a little rough, but I love Virginia. You know, bad <laughs> news, like they go Newport News, bad news, that area. Um, where else? Boston. Um, yeah. Where else? Where else? The Carolinas. Uh, really everywhere. There was nowhere that I went that, because with me, I was just happy to be seeing, you know, the United yeah. States. I never would have imagined that I, I'd be able to move around the country and, and see everything with my own eyes. So... And right. it was, there, you know, it was cool people everywhere I went, you know, so there's no way I really went that I didn't do. How surprising was it to you how receptive people were to your music outside of New York? It was shocking, bro. Like, it, it was, <laughs> it was, it was shocking because, you know, I, I first off, it's not anything that I ever aimed for. Like, it's not like I woke up one day and I was like, yo, I'm going to be a rapper and I'm going to get on and I'm going to be the best one. And it was none of that with me. You know, I, I just was like, okay, I'm going on 18 years old. This is in front of me. Everybody says, you know, I should pursue it. So I did, you know, so um, I just looked at it like that. You know, and, and, and I just took it day by day. And then, you know, to go to other states where people don't even sound like you, you know, like they don't yeah. have a New York accent, you know, to go places like Chicago or, like I said, to go to the bottom in Miami, you know, to go to, like, Opelika or to go to Atlanta or, you know, in L.A. to go to, like, Watts firsthand or Compton firsthand and, and to see people respond to what you did, it's an amazing film. You know, it, it, it's not, there's no description for it. It makes it all worth it. Man, I remember when you dropped that first album, man. I went to Two Live Music in Akron, Ohio. Okay. That's yeah. uh, that's 25 minutes up the way from where I oh. live. I'm in Canton. And uh, me and my crew, we went up there because uh, we, we saw one of your videos on your own TV raps. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, he, he, it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Man, we shot up there. And I, I swear, man, I, we wore that thing thin, man. We used to just roll. Man, I had a Mazda 626, the white on Pirelli tires, <laughs> man. We were just. <laughs> you had the low pros. Yeah, you had the yeah. Pirellis, the low pros. Yeah. I, I know, yeah. I know. I know. That's cool. But I appreciate You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We we just smoke in it. No, it was Mike Geronimo every day, <laughs> all day, man. It was, no, we rocked with you heavy. That's crazy. Heavy. Yeah. 
because you, you you kept it real. You you was an artist. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? It, it really wasn't all that extra. We could tell you was an artist. You took pride in your craft. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and we just really, you know, we became fans from then on. I appreciate it. You know? That's crazy. But it's like we was just saying, like, to hear that, even still to hear that, you know, you got to understand, I'm just me in my room at the time in, in Queens writing my little rhymes, like, okay, nah, I don't like that ourselves. Let me change this. And, you know, so just to hear that, you know, shooting all the way out to Ohio, that's, that's, yeah. a pain, bro, that's a blessing. So I appreciate it. I really do. Cause I, I was, I was heavy, uh, East Coast influenced because after I graduated, I moved to Stanford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Late eighties. I used to go to the Latin quarters. All okay, that. Yeah. So the culture. Right, right. <laughs> right. Right. And then when I, then when I came back home, you know, I'm turning people on to everything, like this person, that person. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's crazy, man. Like, like I said, I, I appreciate it. You know, and it, it, it's things like that that change the course of my life. So, what can you say to that, bro? You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, we we definitely appreciate your art. Now, you you spoke on uh, Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know if a lot of people realize or know you kind of pay tribute to Nipsey. Yeah, fact. In that video rest, for that joint smoke. Yeah, rest in peace to the bro. Yeah. Tell me what inspired that. Why why why'd you do that? Initially I, I did it because um like I never forget the first day I heard Victory Lap. You know, and I and I knew who he was before that because he will he reminded me so much of Snoop whenever I would see him. And I would right. be like, yo, that kid right there, he next up. I don't know what it is, but I'll put my money on him. You know, and then um I didn't even know Victory Lap was coming out. I just downloaded it and I played it and when I played it, it struck me like you know, like Kendrick's first album, it struck me like, like it was a gem, like, and I wouldn't leave it alone. I, I just kept playing and I was like, yo, this, this shit slaps. Like this album is crazy. And like I said, I knew who he was, but I think that opened me up more in terms of being a fan. And then the more that I would hear him talk and the more that I would watch what he was doing from a distance, it was just relatable to me. You know, it, it just kind of felt like, you know, when you cut from the same cloth as somebody, you know, so right. that alone for me was everything. And then when he met his, his demise, like, um, it, it, it hurt, you know, it rocked me. Um, yeah. And I felt like I knew, you know, I felt like he was somebody that I knew. And so I think that's really, Initially, that was my way of just saying, I appreciate the fact you was here and that you gave us what you gave us and that you inspired me. And it doesn't matter that, you know, I was doing this 15 years before and or whatever, it inspired me a great deal, you know? So I just wanted to show that love and then as fate would have it, um, we actually ended up doing a song for my project that's, coming out so it was just weird that i had this sort of for lack of a better way of putting a spiritual connection to him only to end up down the road actually doing a song with him you know so it just felt like the thing to do we was in la and i don't think there was anything or is anything more la with the exception of death row than that you know so it was just my way of paying homage to him. That's all. Nothing more. That that that's dope, man. I, I like when I came up on that, man, I was like, this some real shit. And and the song is, is dope as hell. Like I said, for people that's in the lyrics, man, you gotta rock with my man Geronimo. You it's got true. to. He's still busting them out. Yeah. You gotta rock with it's it. Sorry. Now what are you listening to nowadays? Um 
I actually just got a chance the day before yesterday to hear uh, it's almost dry to push a T joint. Mm. And I'm liking that. That's cool as hell. Um, what else am I listening to? Um, I listen to Ross. I listen to Roddy Rich. Shout out to Roddy Rich. Um, another person I got a surprise coming with. Um, <laughs> um, I listen to. I'm a big Wayne fan, so I still yeah. please. I still listen to Drake. I think they two of the most talented people to ever do it. Um, I really don't have a criteria, bro. It depends on how I feel that day. If I want to wake up and hear Big Daddy Kane, I do. If I want to wake up and listen to Future, I do. If I want to wake up and listen to uh, Fabio Farm, and I do that. You know, it just depends yeah. on how I feel when I get up. Now, as an artist, mm -hmm. I want you to explain to people the power of music because it seems like a lot of people really don't understand the true power of music. Because mm -hmm. one of my personal pet peeves is when people say, I just listen to the beat. Mm -hmm. I think that's some sucky. To each his own, but that's some sucky. <laughs> that's some sucky. You can't expect everyone to be the connoisseur that you are, Al. You feel what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> You cut from a different club, brother. You know what I mean? So I get where you're coming from. I feel you. Um, I always say that it's the most, it's one of the most powerful forces under the sun. I just believe it to be that. I think it's just like mathematics. It's universal. Like, so you wouldn't even have to be from this world to to get it, to understand it, to, to feel it, because it's not just something written and something played and something heard. It's, you feel it, you, you breathe it, you, you react to it, you know, and then from there, it, it dictates so much about you. Like, it can motivate you to dress a certain way. It can motivate you to talk a certain way. It can motivate you to be involved or less involved with things, you know, so it's just this intangible force that it's not so much different from any religion. It's not, it, it's a, it, I, I can't say that for everybody, but for me, it's spiritual, you know, it, it, it is. when I can't articulate something just through a regular way of communicating, or when I want to push myself to express something in a way that isn't just cut and dry, there's music, you know? So, and it just, it, it runs the gamut, you know, it, 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 it has no boundaries and it has no cutoff point and it has no, no age. It, it, it's just this force, you know, and you see it, bro, you seen what hip hop done did for this world. Yeah. So, or you've seen what rock and roll has done for this world. You've seen what jazz does for this world. You know, you, you've seen what R&B has done for this world. And, and any genre, pardon me, any genre, it, it yeah, somebody just said it best. It, it soothes the soul, you know? Yeah. And it's I, I, when nothing else will. So. You're right. It's like, it's always a spiritual connection, good or bad. Absolutely. But there's... A connection. a connection. Now, what what can we look forward to hearing from you? What what you got going on next? Where where should we look for you? What what you got coming up next, man? Oh, you got, I'll be everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be everywhere in a, in a hot minute. Um, but yeah, the main thing right now is just tightening up the project. Uh, it's entitled Thirty Sixteen. Um, okay. I named it 3016 uh, after my dad. My dad passed away a couple of years ago, but he was in the military and he was a member of NYPD. And his badge number is 3016. Is actually, his badge. Um, oh, that's dope. Yeah, so man. my dad inspired me a great deal to go back in and, and, you know, do an album. So I named it 3016 for him. Um, 
terms of what's in store, like, I could tell you for days, but the way I feel about it, I don't want it to that. Like, me talking about it doesn't. Yeah. You don't, you don't <laughs> understand. You know, so, I mean, um, but I have a lot of killer production on it. I, I have the pleasure of working with Mr. Lee, who's done a whole bunch for Scarface, a um, whole bunch for Nip. Uh, a whole bunch for Busta, Rowdy. Um, uh, I have a couple of cameos. Um, Scarface is on there. Uh, Nipsey. Okay. Uh, Rowdy Rich is on there. Um, I don't think I could go into the rest of the cat because my, the, the, all right, don't give everything away. So, right. But I got. I got you. Uh, a lot of talented individuals. I got to work with Rhythm D from, you know, from Death Rose Heyday. And I got to work with people like um, Battle Cat. And, and to be able to go to LA and, and work with Battle Cat was like a dream come true personally for me. Wow. You know, um, uh, DJ Toon, shout out to my brother Toon, me and Toon. We turn into two mad scientists and and <laughs> in the lab, yeah, in the lab. Yeah, you can forget about it. Like all bets is off, bro. So, you know, just between those three, my man Black Mike, shout out to him. He he gave me some some brand new fire. Um who else? Nick Wiz, shout out to him. Um DJ Who Else, A to R Beats, who are both newcomers. Um uh, my man from the UK, Dream Life Beats, he gave me some fire too. So I got a lot. A lot. <laughs> a lot. And I'm going to have a lot of fun. I'm really going to enjoy it, you know, because I've never had this much fun ever making an album in my entire life. So, let, let me stop you right uh, here. I love the fact that you said fun. Oh, yeah. That's the key to it. That's the key to it. That's everything. That's everything. If you're not having fun doing it, there's really no reason to be doing it. You know, but yeah. people going to hear it if you're not having fun. And and that and that's how we continue to push the, the hip-hop culture forward by having fun and, and enjoying it. it. Exactly. Well, what I love personally is Watching the maturation of hip hop, I, and I'm and I'm 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 so happy that 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 a lot of you guys are still going because you know they try they they try to make it a young man's sport. Yeah, you know, I mean, but yeah. people fail, people fail to realize it's the youngest music genre, so we never really seen any artists age gracefully in that genre I was, until I, now. I was going to say, look no further than Tom Brady. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, granted, it, it it definitely has the spirit of youth to it. I think that's one of the cornerstones of hip hop. But I, I do believe in the last couple of years that, you know, like you said, the music's maturing. And a lot of people that have been a part of it are maturing as well. And I just know for myself, bro, I don't concentrate at all on what the world tells you you should or shouldn't, or, or what the world may say is or isn't. I'm not here for that, bro. I'm only here to be me, bro. You know? Yeah. As long as I still feel enthused enough to do it, as long as I still feel that it's just as fun as skating on a skateboard or riding a bike. Yeah. I'll continue to do it, you know? And then as long as I feel the confidence that I have, you know, in terms of delivery, how I sound, uh, lyrically what I'm saying, um, pushing the boundaries, then you could do this as long as you want to do it. You know, you, you, yeah. that's what separates you from everyone else. You're not the one who listened to everybody. You chose to keep going. Yeah. I'm having a ball with it, bro. I, I've, like I said, <laughs> I, I've had this much fun not even making my first album. Mm. So I, I'm just 
There's no word to describe how I feel about it. There's no no. And, and, and that's the beauty of it, man. Just just controlling your destiny. I can be an artist. I'm not worried about having to deal with all these people. That that's why I like mm -hmm. where the, the music game is right now because you know you can do you now. Like you can really do. Yeah, you. absolutely, absolutely. You just have to stay dedicated to it, and you know you you got it's a balancing act. You know, and it's time for you to 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 be married to it and to make magic. There is nothing to worry about. You just go and you feel it. You know, on the other side of that coin, there will come times when you got to pay attention. You got to be shrewd. You got to be rational. You got to be on point because it is a business. So you just find a way to mess the two together, and then you go from there, bro. There it is. There it is. Man, I want to thank you for your time. It's been an honor. Wow. I've been I, I've been waiting for this a long time, bro. I, I'm glad I'm here, bro. I'm glad I'm here. Like I said, I appreciate you having me. So you know, you know, I it's conversations always just want to put out a uh, just change the narrative on hip hop. I also do R and B artists, and just I don't like to do the gossip, messy, messy, all that nonsense. That's cool. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not trying to get a million, whatever. I, I want my whole thing. Is, is, it's kind of like your music. I just want to put out good content. That's it. And that's all it got to be, bro. If, if that's enough for you, then that should be enough for the world, bro. You feel me? Absolutely. And, man, I'm telling you, when you in Ohio, reach out oh, to Oh, I was going to say, build that up. up. Like, whatever, whatever, whatever barbecue or fish and chips joint we go into, let me know, man. I'll be ready. <laughs> you know, I'll stay Hey, man, you be here. We will take care of you. Oh, man, we got to, because, uh, you know, we got the Pro Football Hall of Fame weekend. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we also got the HBU, uh, HBCU Classic popping here now. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and, um, and if you're really a football fan, you know the uh, the USFL yeah. that they got now? The playoffs from the championship kinda, game is going to be. I'm, I'm kind of like I watched my first USFL game last Saturday. And it it kind of felt yeah. very. I'm going to give it a chance. I'm a... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but, but overall, they trying to turn Canton into a football Disneyland. Yeah. Yeah, bro. I mean, for all <laughs> rights, and, per, and it, it, it kind of already is just because of the Hall of Fame. Yeah. You know, but I feel you. I would love that. We gonna make that happen, brother. When I'm out there, we gonna enjoy some football, some memorabilia, and some good food. I'm with that, bro. I got you. I promise you. I got I'm you. I'm there. Hey, let's. I'm there. All right. Thank you for your time, my Thank man. Thank you for having me, Al. I appreciate it, brother. Stay safe out there. You know, keep doing what you do. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you. I appreciate you as well. As well. Everybody else, salute. Thanks for being a part of it. 3016, Summer 22, Mike Geronimo, QMP's The Label, shout out YMVS, shout out Image PR, shout out my QMB squad, shout out my friends, my family, and most importantly, shout out to y'all. I don't call you fans, I call you supporters, so I appreciate the support. You're going to love this album, trust me on that one. <laughs> I'm going to check it out and I'm going to hit you yeah. up. Like, okay, yeah, yes. I gotta send you some previews out, so I got you, bro. It's gonna be a good summer, brother, and beyond that, we all right. Bet I'm waiting yes, on sir. it. All right.